morning. Good morning. Will you stand, please, as you are able, and join me in the call to worship. It's boast in the Lord. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Remain standing as we join together in the opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Number 64. In your United Methodist Chamber. Morning. Good morning. Um, I know that it is difficult for you to see the screen here um, from the back, and, and uh, Pastor Ben and I are working on a method to raise it up higher because that hopefully will help. I don't know. <laughs> um, actually, wheeling it over to the center where it would be easier for everyone to see is very difficult for what else happens during worship. So we're not. I don't know. We're, we're trying to invite technology into the sanctuary while also honoring the, the form of the sanctuary. So I hope you uh, have patience with us in this time. Um, actually, when I was getting ready uh, to do today's creation meditation, I, uh, you know how you do when you look back at things that you've done in the past, like looking at old pictures. 
I went back and was looking at some of the creation meditations that I did when we were shut down during COVID and all of worship was being delivered online. And I found this one about the mountains and about Mount Baldy. And given the rain last night and the clouds this morning, I thought, this one is perfect because we can't see the mountain. So I'm going to show you some pictures of it right now. So this is from two years ago. So just, I hope you enjoy. Today is the eighth Sunday in creation season, and we are celebrating the mountains. Many of the songs in today's service mention mountains. This is intentional, but it is also because many of our hymns mention mountains. Hills and mountains and mountain ranges orient us on this planet. They are the markers of where we live. Here in Upland, we live at the foot of Mount Baldy, which is actually the nickname for Mount San Antonio. Its elevation of 10,066 feet is covered with snow in the winter months, and its granite top make it easily visible to the surrounding valley below. In our spiritual lives, we seek mountaintop experiences of being so filled with God's love that it is like summiting a mountain and then having the immense pleasure of seeing the world more like God might see it. But the counterpart to the mountain is the valley. We often fear the valleys of life when we feel lost or lonely or filled with grief. It would be easy to say that the valleys are necessary because of the mountains, but there really is no necessity for loneliness or grief or being lost. They are just an unfortunate part of life. When we look back to our own Mount Baldy, we see that there are many valleys leading up to the mountain peak. One of the valleys is home to San Antonio Creek, which descends through the deep canyon, creating several waterfalls. The last one is about 75 feet high. This watershed, created by snow and rain, is critical to the survival of all the plants and animals in the surrounding area. The next time you are feeling as though you are in a valley rather than a mountaintop, look around for God's sustaining presence in that place. The promise we have is that even in the depths of our despair, God will be there to nurture and lift us once again to the mountaintop. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa, two years ago, Teresa. Uh, please look to your announcements. Uh, we have um, the uh, fall harvest uh, that's coming not this next Saturday, Monday, but uh, two from now, I think. Uh, and Lisa, uh, would you come forward and tell us something about it? Uh, another thing as she comes forward uh, is that the uh, All Saints Day uh, the celebration usually has uh, those who have passed away. Uh, usually there are candles for our members and, um, and constituents, but then also uh, uh, you can light a candle uh, yourself for a family member or friend. Uh, and so if you would like to, uh, to do that, please be sure that Bernadette has your name so we can get it into the bulletin. Yeah, make sure you know Bernadette so she gets the correct spelling. It's always fun. Um, you know, my name's not exactly normal. Um, so, yes, Harvest Festival. So we are going to do a potluck. So, obviously, things for potlucks. Um, and then on the other end of Fellowship Hall, we're going to have games, crafts, um, and you know, the kids get to come in costume. So, hey, feel free. Adults get come in costume? Of course! Like, I'm not going to? Watch me. Uh, so yeah, so the kids can be in costume. The kids are actually going to read scripture that day, too, so it'll be really cute. Hi, women. Guess what you're doing? Um, so, oh wait, Brett's here, too. He meant to get him. <laughs> and seen him in forever. Um, so yes, just you. Know. So it will go from 11 to 11.30 with potluck, and then 11.30 to 12.30 will be fun and games. So please come. Um, I still need non-candy 
raises. I've got quite a bit of candy, but hi, I'll still take more candy. You know, more candy the better, right, Alpha? How big the non-candy prices are we talking about? Well, you know, like pencils and slinkies. Um, I don't know, Claudia, do you want slime in your house? I don't. Um, Play-Doh, the little Play-Doh things, they like those. Alpha, help me out. What else would you want? Spider rings. Those are always fun. What? Oh, now she's telling me she doesn't know. Really? All right, so yes, please don't forget. And yes, All Saints, names, please. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and uh, this coming week, uh, we do have our outreach uh, committee meeting at 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Is that correct? Yep, 5 o'clock Tuesday. Uh, and uh, then Prayers and Squares are meeting this week as well. It's the, uh, the longer one that they do during the, um, during the month. Uh, from 9 to 3, that's Wednesday at the Dugan House. Uh, other announcements that need to be made? Oh, one of the announcements I think is that the women's Bathroom downstairs, the sink isn't working. We're having to replace parts, and, uh, and so that's what got in the way this last week. Uh, so uh, you might want to uh, at least wash your hands in the handicapped bathroom, if not use it, uh, just to, uh, to, uh, to help us all out. Uh, please, please, uh, patience with, uh, with our staff as we try to get it all fixed. Other announcements? Joys and concerns. Uh, one of the joys that's listed is uh, Crystal Steele's pending surgery. She had the surgery, and it was uh, successful, uh, but she's still uh, moving slow. Uh, so, uh, um, a gallbladder removal, mm -hmm. and uh, and so um, uh, keep Crystal uh, and Paul in your prayers, mm -hmm. and Jason. Uh, other uh, joys and concerns? Yes, please. Cyrus will be having his surgery tomorrow um, at 1 in the afternoon. Uh, hernia surgery? Yeah. yeah. If you would keep him in your prayers, keep the family in your prayers, it's kind of, you know, he's small and he's little. And, and, Hall like, and Halloween is coming. And that is an important thing to him. I'm sure it is. Almost <laughs> as much as Christmas. So, thank you. <laughs> so, so strong prayers for little yeah. Cyrus. Yeah. Yeah, others? Um, hold on. Let me get back. I'm not wearing my mask. I'm sorry. Um, a joy this time. Um, my baby Sean. Baby Sean. My baby child turned 21 yesterday. What? So, what? <laughs> He kind of he got carded by his first pair at Stainers yesterday, so he's kind of proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm always proud of that. Yeah. Other not other uh, uh, Joyce concerns? Yes. Uh, asking for prayers for friends of ours, uh, Essie and Joseph. Their 40-year-old uh, son um, was uh, found dead yesterday, uh, last week on, on Sunday morning. Uh, very difficult time for them. They're still trying to figure out what happened. But prayers for them. His funeral is tomorrow. Mm. Thank you. Yes, prayers. Yes, Ron. <laughs> I guess we've segued into passing the microphone, so. My younger brother, Dan, has been just diagnosed with colon cancer. Mm. Uh, tests are still ongoing for the next couple of weeks to determine the extent of it, but the initial indications are not good. So, prayers for him, please. Good, thanks, Ron. On the 22nd of October, will be Ruiz and my uh, 51st wedding anniversary. Wow. Congratulations to you. Good, 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 good luck to Renee. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Um, yes. Uh, prayers for our relative uh, Cheryl Heskin, who's uh, uh, struggling with her reoccurrence of cancer and uh, difficult prognosis and, and uh, further treatments. Oh. Thank you, David. All right. You know, I think um, maybe. Maybe we can start passing the microphone, but maybe we should have masks if we're going to talk on the microphone. So if you have a joy or concern to bring, bring your mask as well or pick one up in the narthex so that we can continue to uh, be sure that we are safe. All right. So uh, please stand and greet the people around you with words of peace. How you doing? Sir? Peace. Good to see you. Peace. you're all sitting down, will you please stand uh, and turn in your hymn hymnals, your uh, United Methodist hymnals, to number 572 as we sing together, pass it on. Let's stand as we sing.
Will Lisa and the children please come forward? Let the children come. I said, let the children come. Then we'll be as one. Let the come children on. come. Let the children come. Let them come so they can know. A God loves them so. Let them come so they can feel. A love that won't let go. So we have our wagon pretty full now. So our goal, right? We want to send a full one out every time we get to donate. So um, we're going to do our little blessings for that right now. All right. Yes, they uh, they said they're very short on food, uh, and so uh, feel free to. Uh, bring more. We'll bless it monthly, but if we get a whole bunch all at once, we'll we'll do a mid-month uh, um, uh, delivery as long as they are uh, short on food for the, um, the poor and hungry in our area. But let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all the blessings that allow us to share. We thank you, Lord, for those workers who are giving giving their lives to, to feeding the hungry. And Lord, we pray that we would be inspired and awakened to, to help them help others. Lord, we lift up the, the people who come for, for food and sustenance, Lord, we pray. That your mercy would be upon them, that ways would be open, the doors would be open, uh, to allow them to be able to live with, uh, with pride and, and uh, sufficiency. So, Lord, we pray that you would wrap uh, those in such need in your care. And, Lord, that we might continue to, to carry your blessings to others. In the name of our blessed Savior, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Now I guess my... There we go. All right, my friends. So, if you saw... A scary Halloween mask. Just, you know, one of those geeky monster ones. Just hanging up. Are they that scary? No, right? They're not that scary. But if somebody puts it on, and there's a spooky voice, right? That's a little scarier, right? Okay, how many of you guys watch scary movies? <laughs> See, Miss Lisa doesn't like scary movies. I don't even like, I didn't like The Wizard of Oz as a kid. Those flying, yeah. those flying monkeys and that witch are not nice. I did not like them. And it's funny as my older sister's the same way. We don't like flying monkeys. Those would give us nightmares. But I don't like scary movies at all. And I don't like those scary masks. But seeing one, silly rubber mask, they're not that scary. But they are in person. Uh, what? Goosebumps. <sighs> Goosebumps. Um, my parents that know that Goosebumps books. Remember you ever watched Goosebumps movie? Yeah. yeah. Those ones are a little creepy, I think. Remember those books, Renee? Yeah. Not my favorite books. I don't think, Matt, Matt, did you ever read Goosebumps books? Yeah? A little bit. I don't remember reading them. Yeah, those are a little creepy. I love mystery books. Those are like my favorite genre to read as an adult, but I don't, they're not scary, necessarily. I don't like Blending dads, that's not my thing. I don't like them. So, but it's that, you, if you have a mask on, are you a different person? Not really, you're still the same person inside, right? It's actually kind of funny sometimes if somebody has a funny voice to go with it, right? Okay, so what about masks? Like, my kids didn't like the big giant heads at Disneyland. Like. My daughter would not go near the beast until she was about three and we had gone like five or six times and then she got used to the beast. Because it's big. Goofy kind of freaked out Matt. Because um, he's just huge, but Matt was like two, so yeah, it's a little creepy at that point, right? Anybody scared of those ones? Yeah, right? They're a little intimidating, right? But we also know, right? The story we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about Daniel and the furnace. And what, remember, remember that on our carpet? We have a really cool carpet in our room that just picks different stories. And that one happens to be 
a, fi a fiery furnace. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So sometimes we have to w wonder about who's going to protect us, right? Those scary movies. Mm -hmm. I know somebody, they're not real, but I have to get it through my head that it's not real, right? There is no such thing as flying monkeys. Is there? Check it. We gotta be brave, right? I just avoid those places. That's me. All right, dear Lord, thank you for these brave children and their ability to know what is truthful and what is eh, not so truthful and that you will protect them if they need any help, if they need your bravery to make them brave. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's creation psalm meditation is Psalm chapter 36, verse 5 through 9. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your lightness is the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O oh God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delight. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Amen. Our song of prayer can be found on page number 328. Uh, and please remain seated so that uh, we can be in... Are you... Well, am I not on, Paul? No. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Yeah, he waves so I can see him up in the back. Thanks, Paul. Um, please remain seated as we uh, turn to page number 328 and sing together, surely the presence of the Lord. continue in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you giving thanks praising your holy name, knowing that all good gifts come from you, that as we share with others, we share blessings that we have received, and we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for the children who uh, carried our gifts of food out, and we thank you for those who will distribute and those who will receive. Lord, keep us mindful of all the blessings that are ours. 
and inspire us, Lord, to share as you will. Lord, we give you thanks for the rain, uh, for the beauty. We pray, Lord, that uh, we would continue to have rain. Uh, and Lord, uh, we lift up areas that might be suffering flooding or damage. Lord, uh, help those who uh, are repairing their homes uh, after the great uh, floods and storms in, in Florida and the rest of the South and the islands. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them and those who have lost uh, loved ones and, and their homes, Lord, we pray that you would comfort them, that you would surround them with your grace and your peace. Lord, uh, we uh, lift up Cyrus as he prepares for surgery on Monday. Lord, we pray that his healing uh, would be quick. Lord, we lift up Essie and Joseph on the passing of their 14-year-old son. Lord, we pray that you would surround them with, with your strength. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, Ron's brother, Dan, uh, as he faces colon cancer and uh, the treatments that, uh, that will be difficult. And we pray that you ease him as much as possible and, uh, and, and bring your comfort as, uh, as uh, the, the, they try to find ways to bring healing. Lord, we pray that your hand would be upon him and, and bring health. Lord, we uh, lift up uh, Cheryl uh, and uh, her uh, life with, uh, with cancer. We pray, Lord, that you would surround her with, uh, with, your, with your presence and your healing. Lord, there are others who are sick and in need of your strength, and we lift them before you in silence. And Lord, we give you thanks for such blessings. Uh, we uh, thank you for Sean's 21st birthday. We thank you, Lord, for Crystal's uh, healing and that her surgery was successful. We pray that uh, her healing would be speedy. Uh, Lord, we uh, lift up the nobles in their anniversary, giving you thanks and praise. Lord, there are so many ways our lives are touched by you. Help us be filled with appreciation as, as we share in the joys of each and every day. We look forward to all that lies before us, and we pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen us and lead us and guide us. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We continue our worship this morning as we dedicate our tithes and offerings to God. <laughs>
in the Bible, you pull out your new covenant for your people. We rejoice in unison by sharing the message you have written on our hearts. Salvation in Jesus Christ is the prosperity we need to proclaim to those searching for your mercy and love. Multiply these gifts so that ministries are provided with your people today who seek to be in a faithful relationship with you. In Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 to 8, and I am reading from the Inclusive Bible. Jesus told the disciples a parable on the necessity of praying always and not losing heart. Once there was a judge in a certain city who feared no one, not even God. A woman in that city, who had been widowed, kept coming to the judge and saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For a time, the judge refused. But finally, the judge thought, I care little for God or people, but this woman won't leave me alone. I better give her the protection she seeks or she'll keep coming and wear me out. Jesus said, listen to what this corrupt judge is saying. Won't God then do justice to the chosen who call out day and night? Will God delay long over them? I tell you, God will give them swift justice. But when the promised one comes, will faith be found anywhere on earth? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. They say mid-December, the doctor's going to look at my foot again. So just be in prayer that I get all healed up through the month of November. Let's be in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, and we pray uh, that your Holy Spirit would surround us, that we would uh, find your healing presence in all that we do. And Lord, that we would be ready to follow. In the name of our Savior, amen. There was a minister and a taxi driver who died at the same time, ended up going up uh, before St. Peter at the very same moment, and St. Peter said, well, come, I'll take you both together and uh, show you your, uh, your beautiful homes here in, uh, in heaven. Uh, so they went to the taxi drivers first. It was a great palatial mansion with a Cadillac in the front yard. Uh, and uh, St. Peter said, here is your home. And as they went on, he and the minister, the minister thought to himself, well, if the taxi driver ended up with that, what kind of gorgeous place am I going to have? Uh, and they got there, and, and he said, here's your home. It was a very cute little, nice, quaint craftsman uh, with, uh, uh, with a chevette in the front yard. And, and he said, I don't understand what happened. The, the taxi driver got that beautiful place. I hear you, there must be a mix-up. And St. Peter shook his head and said, Oh, no, up here in heaven, we judge on results. When he drove, people prayed. And when you preached, people slept. 
<laughs> Today, uh, a different kind of judge is approached. Uh, this, this judge is uh, um, a ruthless uh, a, a judge who uh, has no concern uh, for true justice. Uh, in uh, the ancient world, in, in ancient uh, um, Palestine, the, the, the people who were chosen to be judges were not necessarily uh, the best of people. Uh, and uh, the rulings that involved uh, finances were decided by the one judge all by himself. Uh, and uh, so uh, if that judge uh, perhaps got a little bit of extra money on the side, well then his, the judgment might not seem just. Uh, and uh, so this happens to a widow. Uh, the, uh, the, the laws of uh, ancient Israel, uh, unlike some of the others like Greece, were different in that uh, the line between being female and being property was a very fine one. Uh, the, the, the woman was not able to inherit the property of her husband if her husband died. That would go to a son, uh, or that would go to a brother, uh, and, uh, not, and not to her. And so what often happened was that widows were left out on the street. Uh, and one of the great marks of the church is that it cared for orphans and widows. That was because those two classes of people were considered uh, not worthy of, of attention and were discarded by society. Uh, and so when Jesus talks about this widow in his parable, uh, he, uh, people, people are aware of what goes on, what's actually happening, and uh, how a, a woman could be without justice. Uh, and uh, so uh, she is impoverished uh, and, uh, and unable to buy justice for herself and instead goes over and pounds on the door of uh, the town judge over and over again. You know, an interesting thought. Jesus was probably very young when Joseph died. He had been uh, without his father long enough that he is called the son of Mary, and that is something that would only happen if the father had been dead for a long, long time. We have record of that, son of the mother, but it's only when the father has been dead for a long time. And when you think about it, you wonder, when Joseph died, did Jesus inherit the carpentry shop? and his mother inherited nothing. Think about that for a minute. When Jesus tells the story, maybe it is some of his own experience, uh, that he, as a, uh, as a boy, inherits uh, the carpentry shop and has to step into that role and be carpenter, or else his mother would starve. There's probably a little bit of personal remembrance in Jesus telling this story. But he starts out and says that this is a parable about prayer. When I was at Sun City, there was a, a group of people, four elderly people, from, uh, from a, a little place called Survival Ministries in Paris. And we would pray for them over and over again and provide food much like we're doing for, for Sofa here. And uh, I went over to take the food to them one time, the person who normally did couldn't do it. Uh, and uh, we, we, we brought that food over, a, a small truck uh, full, full of food, my, my small truck. And I met these people. These were four people in their 80s and their 90s who ran this place out of an old barn that was attached to a church. The church had been built, the barn had remained, uh, and they were given, uh, given the ability to use the barn. And, uh, and, and so these four people in their 80s and 90s, that's all there was, took this, this food and clothing and 
they, they figured, they added it up one time. And the people that were helped over a month were several thousand people. Paris is a very poor area. Some of them were homeless, and some of them were simply impoverished. But four older people, 80s and 90s, fed thousands of people. The Lord works in mysterious and powerful ways. We are called on to share. We are called on to lift up in prayer. Perhaps Jesus' own family had been supported by prayer of the community and perhaps by offerings from the community until he could actually grow old enough to do the work of the carpenter. We don't know. But we are called on to pray. We are called on to pray. There's something about prayer that is often misunderstood in the, in the Christian church. We would like for prayer to be whatever we want. You know, oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz, right? I mean, there's a reason why we can relate to that song. You know, color TV, not black and white. Back in the day. Now it would be what high definition, large, whatever you call it. Whatever you call it, I mean, TV. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, and, uh, and, and, and we would like it to be that way, and that's not the way prayer is. Uh, prayer is not like putting it in order to God. You know, the, God's not the fast food person who you talk into the microphone and then pick up the fast food at the window. When we are in prayer, uh, we are building a relationship with God. Uh, and that doesn't include us giving orders. Um, that would be magic. That's what magic is. That's not what prayer is. What the uh, church has said through the ages is that a grace that comes through prayer or through any other means is a mystery. It's not magic, it's a mystery. And it is a mystery. As, uh, as we try to understand what goes on in our prayers. Uh, we can't give God's orders, but we can lay our lives before God uh, and, and ask. And there's nothing wrong with that. When I was in seminary, we had a class on hospital visitation. So they divided up the hospitals, and so we would go, and we would see anybody who said they were a Methodist when they came into the hospital. That was one of the questions that was asked. Uh, and uh, so that was my first introduction to hospital uh, visitation. And uh, there, uh, I went into uh, a room that was a, a, a nice gentleman there, obviously very faithful. We talked for a while. Uh, he said, would you give me a prayer? And I prayed, and I prayed a prayer that would have lots of generalities in it. In fact, at no time in the prayer did I ask for healing for him. And uh, when I was done praying, he said, um, he said, uh, you didn't ask for healing. Why did you not? And I said, well, you never know what God's going to do. And I, I didn't want to presume upon God. And he said, I don't want, I, I do not want a minister who does not believe in the power of prayer. Pray again. <laughs> and so I prayed again for him, and you can bet this time I included a lot about healing there. You know, what a wonderful gentleman to just you know, open my eyes to what was needed. Uh, in, um, uh, when we were at, uh, in New Jersey, uh, the different conferences are different. We tried this for a little while to have a short time of doing CPE and then an internship that wasn't as long as the internship that, uh, that, that we have here in, in this conference. Uh, and uh, so it was a six month internship and a six month CPE. Uh, oh, oh, CPE is like when you're doing uh, counseling, uh, pastoral counseling, that, that sort of thing. And uh, sometimes, uh, uh, with the hospital and sometimes in other settings. Uh, we tried it for a little while and decided that they needed to have a longer internship and they were on their own for, for hospital. You know, so we, they, we went back to just a, a learning about hospital visitation in, in class uh, here at this conference. But in New Jersey, they still do it the other way. Uh, and uh, one of the students was uh, talking about his, uh, about his internship as, uh, in CPE. 
and, uh, and, and praying with people uh, who, were, uh, who were, were suffering. Uh, and, and he was directed to the hospice wing of the hospital. And uh, he, he told us about this and said, I don't know what I'm going to do. How do you pray for people in hospice? They're going to die anyway. And, uh, <laughs> and so he went in, and three days later, I talked to him again. And he said, you know, after three days, I found out that praying for people in hospice is the most important thing you can do. Nothing else will give them the strength that prayer will give them. The most important thing you can do is to pray. There is healing. Jesus, perhaps, uh, out of experience with his mother, but then his own experience, you see, he goes to pray over and over and over again. We know that in Luke, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed, he prayed so, so hard that drops of blood appeared on his forehead. Jesus was someone who Luke tells us over and over again, got away by himself to pray. Prayer was deeply important to Jesus Christ. And he calls on his followers for prayer to be important. And what does he say? He says we have to be persistent. Now in our story, he's not talking about God as an unjust judge. He's talking about the woman being insistent upon uh, what she needs to survive. Be insistent. And that in prayer, we should be as insistent as the woman. You've got to be really careful about making kings and princes and judges all about God. Because if you look at the New Testament, uh, you have a pretty bad image of God. And that's because kings and princes and judges were not all that good of people a lot of the time. <laughs> the people who listened to Jesus would not make that mistake. It's about the woman. It's about praying. And praying over and over again. Uh, pray without ceasing, Paul says. Uh, at least pray incessantly even if it isn't without ceasing. Uh, Jesus says that we're to pray like this woman pounding on the door. Uh, my grandmother uh, uh, was uh, a, a good minister's wife, uh, but she got a little angry with a car mechanic. Uh, I was uh, taking her to drop her off to pick up her car that had been repaired in theory. Uh, and she drove away, turned around and drove back. The car had the same problem it had before. This was the third time. And so I was uh, you know, getting out of the car and waiting for her to go talk to the mechanic uh, as, again, he was going to work on the car. And she pointed her finger at him. And she said, I, this is the third time I dropped this car off to you. And it hasn't been repaired. Have you ever heard that the squeaky wheel gets the grease? And he very meekly said, yes. And she said, I'm that squeaky wheel, make it right. That's the kind of insistence we're supposed to have. Now, we need to have a little respect for God, you know, and, uh, maybe not yelling quite like that, but I don't know that God would really mind. God wants us to, uh, to be in communication. Prayer is the, uh, is the avenue by which we are in communication, in relationship with God. And uh, and, and God wants us to pray. Why do we pray? Because God wants it. We are, are called on uh, to, to be ready to communicate with God at all times. Not just when we're sitting at home in our prayer chair or, or kneeling in our prayers. We are called on to be, uh, to be attentive to God at all times. And, and to share, and to share openly. During uh, these next couple of weeks, uh, I'm inviting you to have a, a time of spiritual uh, renewal, that this kind of might be, I call it, 40 days of gratitude. I've sent out an email to people who get email. If you normally get email and didn't get it, let me know, and I'll make sure your name gets on there, or at least uh, is on there. Uh, it's a little tricky with the way, uh, way spam rules work now. Uh, but, but I'm sending that out, and there'll be something about prayer every day for the next week. 
uh, as we uh, as we look at ways in which uh, prayer uh, can be life changing. I'd like to change uh, uh, end with a short story. Uh, it um, it was there when I was at school of theology, and uh, I decided it's my first year. I wasn't working anywhere yet. Uh, and uh, you know, my dad was helping out a lot, and it allowed me to uh, go without working for that first, uh, he thought, year, but it turned out to be a semester because we had to uh, go work with the class. And I decided that since I wasn't working anywhere, I would go and I would pray for an hour every morning in the chapel. And so I would, uh, I'd class at nine, I'd go at eight, I'd sit in the chapel and pray for an hour. And you know, a, a, a neat thing, when you start praying for an hour, you run out of things to say. Especially on the second or third day, you know, you've said everything several times. And, uh, you know, you're sitting there and you're praying and, and you run out of things to say. And then you can actually listen a little bit. And, uh, and listen to God finally. You know, prayer was less than me just carrying on a one-sided monologue that, uh, that I, could, I could sit and, uh, and listen. And as I said one day after doing this for a while, I had just a very strong feeling that it was one of the uh, one of the the girls at uh, young ladies at uh, at school, and uh, and the message was, go see her, she needs you now. And I said, okay, I guess so, Lord. I mean, when you, you get something, it's a really really strong feeling, and and uh, well, okay. And I, I got up, she was one of the group of friends, and we had, we had pizza potlucks together. We would get together, anybody who could play an instrument brought the instrument, and we brought toppings for pizza, and we had pizza till late into the night, and sang uh, all different kinds of songs and music, mostly uh, uh, sort of, you know, James Taylor, folk, whatever. Like that. And uh, so I went over there, and I, I knocked on her door there about, what, 8.30, 8.45 in the morning, and, and she came with the phone in her hand. Now, we didn't have, you know, phones that you could walk around with back then. This was one of those phones that had a really long cord that went through the house. And she showed up with the phone in her hand and hung it up as I saw her. And she said, I just learned that my parents are getting divorced. Just learned. Prayer is a powerful thing. Prayer is not nothing. Prayer is not sitting and talking to yourself. Uh, prayer is not, uh, is not just staring off into space. Prayer is a relationship that's built with the Lord. And the Lord will speak. Sometimes we go through peri periods of silence. And it's difficult. But we are called on even when the door doesn't seem to be opening to keep knocking on it. And the Lord will respond. Amen. Our closing song is Open My Eyes That I Might See, number 454, 454 in your hymnals. Let's stand as we say, Open My Eyes That I Might See.
stay standing and join together in our benediction song. Our benediction song.